So um, you don't get just one living composer today. At least last time I checked, I'm still alive. And uh, you get two. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Annie Guzzo, who is our composer in residence this year. Thank you. Um, that was such a warm, wonderful piece. I'm, I'm delighted to have been here for the premiere of that. Well, tonight, um, or today, sorry, it's afternoon, I forget, we have something decidedly less cuddly, as you can <laughs> see up there, although one end is furry. Uh, the next piece is about microbes, which for the kids in the audience who maybe don't know about microbes, they're very, very small. So small, you usually can't see them with the human eye. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that, but before I get too far into it, I wanna talk about the U-Cross Foundation where all of these ideas were born. So I went to a residency in a beautiful place in Wyoming called U-Cross, and Thomas Blomster was the first music resident at this great artist residency. Um, so we set it off well, I think. Um, in any case, uh, I was paired with four artists uh, and four scientists, so we had a, a grouping there, and each of us artists got to work with the scientist. Uh, at the time, I was paired with the geologist, and we wrote some arias about rocks. We, we called it a rock opera. <laughs> um, <laughs> But what ended up happening uh, um, for this concert is that I was fascinated by the microbiologist. And so was the poet, Harvey Hicks. And Harvey is here in the audience today, but we're gonna hear first one of his poems. And this poem, if you'll imagine the beautiful mountains and greenery of the middle of nowhere, Wyoming, birds chirping, um, crickets, sheep, and Harvey trying to wrap his mind around the idea of microbiology, a poet by training, working with Naomi Ward, a microbiologist. So he's in his little writer's cabin, a cell, if you will, thinking about cells and dividing and translating and watching the deer jump by. And so that's the first poem that we will hear. So should we move to that first or, or yeah. my... We thus report the first evidence for spatial segregated transcription and translation in a bacterial cell. The experience escaped me, but I have this report. The truth escaped, but left a trail of evidence, as did those skittish deer, their white tails, a transcription of those white fence post tips serried in translation of boundaries. I watched them through the window of my cell. Watched them, or watched them, watched their heads float through head-high reeds, and as if swimming that animated the marsh meadow and marked its topography, scored that place scarred it. For those few moments, I was of what I was among. The experience escaped me, but I have this report. Landscape arrays mechanisms of wariness, propagates populations skewed towards scurry and cheer, disguises callings to turkeys coaxing turkeys, all those echolocating sheep, as calling a cross. The truth escaped, but left a trail of evidence for me to sort through. Is it leaves, I hear, or the tree? Prairie wind, the swishing by, or range grass, the swishing of? All are all these evidences, evidence of life or of mortality. I watched, listened, sniffed the air, as did those skittish deer, their white tails, a transcription, a tally of my dilemma. That what I cannot identifies and constitutes me more than what I can. 
that my come what will is inaudible against the choral come what may. Their irrefutability, all those white fence post tips serried in translation of the distance to you into the distance from, of my isolated into lost, of this landscape into my spiritual condition. Like those ears raised deer, I listen for signal overlap as they retrace their boundaries I watched them through mine this window this cell Great. So I want to tell you just very quickly about each of the microbes you're about to hear. Um, so let's start with that character that's up there. Uh, its name is Veru Comicrobial Ectosymbiont. <laughs> and uh, what that means is, if you see there's an arrow on the top left, it's pointing to some bacteria that hang out on this little warship of a bacterium or of a microbe. That little arrow, if you look at the bottom, is that tiny little thing that says ER, and it shoots out a 15 times its length harpoon to attack predators. And so this is a little war bug, basically. So the first movement, I want you to hear the sound of the harpoon going out and the instrument called the lion's roar, which we can demonstrate lion's roar first. Isn't that wonderful? Um, so let's demonstrate the harpoon attacking an enemy uh, microbe. So that's the gut spilling out. <laughs> All right, the second movement, um, Noctiluca Sintilans, which is a beautiful, you'll see it when it comes up during the show, but it's a beautiful little microbe that glows in the dark. It eats uh, diatoms, which are little sea creatures, and lives on plankton. And when it's stirred up, it makes more um, sparkles than it, when it isn't. And so it's glow in the dark, and the, I decided sparkles were percussion instruments made out of metal. So I just want um, to ask Bob to demonstrate some metal instruments. Wonderful. Thank you. I appear, oh, there we go. I have to be in the zone, apparently. All right. The next one, uh, the third movement, is Corybacterium glutamiacum. Glutamiacum, sorry. I, I did have lessons, but I'm not good at them yet. This is the same um, microbe that turns, um, makes a chemical transformation and makes that beautiful thing called MSG. It's the glutamin that does that. In any case, it's found in dirt, and it has a most unique way of reproducing. Um, this will grow in little tiny sort of blossom clumps, and instead of dividing, you hear of amoebas that divide, this one snaps off. And as a matter of fact, it's so loud that scientists have made recordings of the snapping bacterium. And so I have chosen to have snapping. So who would like to... And then the, <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> thank you. And then I want Bob, again, percussion, to show off his very, very fine, expensive snapping instruments. Can anyone, can any kids out there guess what that is? Packing, bubble packing material. <laughs> so you see, you've had good practice. <laughs> You're already musicians, wonderful. You should be a percussionist, it's the most fun back there. <laughs> um, then the last movement, the fourth movement, is called Epolopisium fishelonii. And the fishelonii is because it does live in the guts of a certain fish in Australia. Now, this gut 
microbe is very, very big. So big in the world of microbes, of course, that you can actually see it with, your, with a human eye. It's about the size of one eyeball of a fruit fly. <laughs> so it's not very big. But um, in, in my world, it is. Um, it's cigar-shaped, and it also has an unusual reproduction method. What it does is it fills itself, this long cigar shape, with little exact replicas. And then it opens up, and they all swim out, and then they become lung bacterium. Uh, or lung uh, microbes, sorry, I should be properly scientific. Um, so I wanted to ask Silvana here to demonstrate one episode of the big microbe, and then I'll show you one little one. And you know what she did? She went up the white keys and then drew a big cigar shape down the black keys. So that's how the shape is made. Now, I would like to ask Alond, our first flutist, and our only flutist here tonight, but <laughs> our first flutist, would you demonstrate a miniature? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> up and down. Again? Am I gonna get paid Do it again. Slightly longer one. Okay, so you hear that they grow and grow and grow the last time you hear it. And so that's all I'm going to say. Thank you, CCO, wonderful musicians, and I'm thrilled to be here.